بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Indeed all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator, sustainer and controller of the universe and all within and we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger, his family, his companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. And may Allah the exalted cause us to be among them. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm sure you're well aware that by next week, this time, we will all be fasting. And so the month of Ramadan is very near. And this is a time that Allah has endowed with special virtues and blessings so that you and I, if we wish to, we can take advantage of it and we can increase our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The thing is, brothers and sisters, Ramadan is intended to bring about change or fasting in Ramadan is intended to bring about change in the individual. But the change is not going to happen on its own. We have to enter into Ramadan with the will and the intention to change. And inshallah, we'll talk more about that. What I would like to do today is to share with you a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari regarding the special status of fasting in general and of course in particular in Ramadan. Now, first of all, all of us know that sincerity in whatever we do is paramount. No matter how much good we do, if we don't have sincerity in doing these good things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept them. So it is not enough simply to do good things. We also have to make sure that the intention or the motivation by which or through which we do these things, it is right or it's correct. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept only that which is done honestly and sincerely to please Him. And that sincerity is not something that can be judged. It's not physical. It's in the heart. It's how the heart feels. This is where sincerity is and that's what sincerity is all about. As human beings, we can only judge by what is physical. That is, we see a person doing things. But we don't know the motivation behind the person doing these things. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course knows the secrets of the hearts. So that when He judges everyone on the day of judgment, it will be based on actions and intentions. This is why the Prophet والسلام, informed us in the well-known hadith, also in Sahih al-Bukhari, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ Surely actions will be judged by intentions. Now, we all know this, that sincerity is important. And that everything we do, every act, every deed, no matter how major or minor it is, without sincerity, it is basically a useless action. It does not benefit the individual. Yet, in this hadith, in Sahih al-Bukhari, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sheds a different perspective on fasting out of all the other ibadat. In this hadith, and it's a hadith Qudsi, Allah the Exalted says, Kullu amal ibn Adam lahu illa sawm. All the actions and deeds of the human being are for himself except fasting. It is for me and I will reward it. So there are two interesting things that stand out right away from the hadith. The first is, how does Allah say that all the deeds of the human being are for himself except fasting? When everything else that we do also, we try to do so for the sake of Allah. And then Allah says, except fasting, it is for me and I will reward it. And we know that Allah will reward the other deeds as well. So why? 
Now, Ibn Hajar rahimahullah, in his commentary on this uh, hadith, he said that there are two views or two opinions regarding the meaning of this statement that all the actions of the human being are for himself except fasting. Why is fasting singled out? He mentions the first opinion is that it is next to impossible to show off in fasting. While all the other ibadah, it's very easy to show off. No one knows that a person is fasting unless that person tells others, look, I'm fasting. You can't tell. Of course, in Ramadan, we expect that we're all fasting, right? We assume that. But we can't know for sure unless the person tells us, look, I'm fasting. So the possibility of riyah, of showing off, entering into fasting, it's very, very small. While it's much, much easier for a person to try to impress or to show off in doing the other things. So when Allah says all the actions uh, of the human being are for himself except fasting, this is what he's referring to. That it's very easy in the other ibadah to show off, to do it for other reasons. While in fasting, it's, it's almost impossible to show off. So it's easier to be sincere per se in fasting rather than the other ibadah. You have to be careful, right? You're praying and you start off hopefully sincerely, but then, you know, you can... Uh, the element of showing off can creep into that. So you have to be careful and you have to be aware and wary of shaitan and his whisperings. So that's one opinion that fasting, it's almost you know impossible to show off while in the other ibadat, it's very simple and very easy to do so. The other view that he mentions is that fasting requires Denial of desires While the other ibadat They do not require that In fact there is another hadith In Sahih al-Bukhari where Allah, Another hadith Qudsi Where Allah mentions that When Allah says that Except fasting it is for me Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions That the person يَتْرُكْ شَهَوَتَهُ مِنْ أَجْلِي He gives up his desires For my sake For my pleasure so they say that fasting is the only ibadah where you have to not give in to your desires. You have to hold back the desires. You cannot indulge in desires. Those that are halal, of course. Yes? While, while fasting, there are a number of permissible desires that we have to control. We can't eat, we can't drink. These are the two most obvious. For people who are married, they cannot engage in intimate relations with their spouse. So it involves... Denial of the of the desires While the other ibadat do not require that and this is why fasting has this special place Among all the other actions and deeds that we perform in as much as we do everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And in as much as Allah the exalted will reward us for our deeds and actions Fasting fasting is still special for these reasons Now, the scholars also say that when Allah says, وَأَنَا أَجْزِي بِهِ and I will reward it, it also highlights the special status of fasting because after all, Allah will reward everything. Yet He singles out fasting to say that I will reward it. And, and the reason it is special is that, first of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that He is the one who will reward it. And what Allah has is limitless, right? So the implication here is no one can put a cap on how much a person is rewarded for fasting. Allah will decide what the maximum is. And in the other hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari as well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the deed, the good deed is multiplied by 10 times in Ramadan. This is why Ramadan is a special time as well. Not just the fasting, but also the month itself. It's a special time, a blessed time. That in Ramadan, the good deed is multiplied by 10. That's the minimum. 
That's the minimum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could increase. That's why when Allah says, I will reward it, He doesn't say how much. And what Allah has is infinite, and no one can determine for Allah how much it should be, or how less it should be. Allah will determine that. And so this is an indication that it's left open, and no one really knows what the reward is, but we know that Allah is not stingy. First of all, what He has is infinite, it cannot be depleted. Plus, what he, what he is not stingy. So when you put these two, these two together, someone is generous, and then they have a lot, you can easily see that, that this is a person who will give a lot. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ, he encouraged us that when we make dua, we should not be stingy in our dua, asking for just a little bit. Because the problem with asking for a little bit, what it implies is, it implies two things, or one of two things. One that we don't want to ask for too much, you know. If you're asking a human being for something, you don't want to ask for too much. Because you might think, you know, the person might think, well, you know, what's wrong with this guy? I only have so much, right? A human being is more likely to be a bit stingy if you like. Even the generous person, at a cert, after a certain point, that's it, they won't give anymore. So, this is one of the problems with asking for a little bit, right? The implication is, although we may not say that, is that, you know, perhaps Allah won't give all that we want. He's kind of stingy. And the other implication is, well, we don't know how much Allah has, right? So we don't want to ask for too much. That's wrong though. Prophet says, no, you ask for a lot. Because you're asking your Lord. You're asking Allah, who is not a miser. He's not stingy. And on top of that, what Allah has is infinite. It cannot be depleted. It cannot be depleted. So when we ask, ask for a lot. Don't be afraid. Allah is not miserly. He's not stingy. And even if he were to give us everything we ask for, it still will not dent what he has. So, Allah is blessing us with a very, very blessed month of Ramadan. We hope, I mean, it's still about a week away. And we pray that Allah will keep us in good health and good strength. Because anything can happen within the next six or seven days. But this is a special time that Allah presents to us. It's an opportunity. And throughout our lifetime, brothers and sisters, Allah will present opportunities to us. Opportunities, if we take advantage of them, we can increase our chances of being admitted to paradise and being saved from the hellfire. So that on the Day of Judgment, no one can plead with Allah or no one will, will have a justification for asking for more time. Because not only did Allah give us a lifespan to accomplish what we need to accomplish to enter paradise, and by the way, the lifespan is adequate. It's not like we're pressured and pressed for time. But on top of that, Allah gives us all these opportunities, right? Every year, Ramadan comes and goes. Some opportunities may only come once in a lifetime. But Allah presents to us these opportunities to help us, to make it even easier for us. This is how benevolent and grace, gracious Allah is. So the month will come, and then the month will go. And as I said at the beginning, we have to have the will and the desire to change. It's a, it's a time for change, yes. This is why when Allah says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ In the Qur'an, it is translated sometimes as so that you may learn self-restraint. Right? This is the control, this is the, uh, the training, the change that we're talking about. But the change will not happen just like that. It takes commitment from the individual, the desire and the will of the individual to change. Only then this month will be a process whereby they will change. So that by the time the month comes to an end, 
the person would have improved on something in their lives and they would have also unlearned one bad habit or, or a couple of bad habits. So I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless all of us. We will talk more about this as the as we go through the month of Ramadan insha'Allah. May Allah bless all of us. May He open our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message He has revealed for the upliftment of human beings in this world as well as in the hereafter. And may Allah inspire us all to live by this message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all safe and healthy so that not only do we witness the month of Ramadan, but that we have the energy and the health and the strength to make full use of the wonderful opportunity that Allah presents to us in this blessed month. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to take advantage of this opportunity. May He protect us from going astray. May He forgive for us our mistakes and shortcomings. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته